We first met her as a lovesick, spoiled princess who turned into the Golden General, leading armies against the Dark Queen herself. I'm talking about Laurelantha Lassa Cannon, of course. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to dive into the life of Lorelantha Lassa Cannon. I'd like to take a moment and thank my collaborator patrons, the Heroes of the Lance, and invite you to consider becoming a patron or member of this channel by visiting the links in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. I am referencing the source books and novels for this information, but if you believe I misspeak or have something wrong, please leave a comment below. I get a lot of flack from Dragonlance fans about my perceptions of Lorana as a character. She's entirely defined by the state of the world, rising to the challenges set before her, but her beginnings were less than admirable. Tracy Hickman refers to as transitioning from a spoiled little girl to the General of Armies. Tracy actually named her after his wife, Laura. Lorana was one of the original three characters that Tracy and Laura Hickman workshopped to define Dragonlance. Kitiara as the Paragon of Evil, Lorana as the Paragon of Good, and Tannis as the Paragon of Neutrality. Just as the trio would have a love triangle and moral struggles between them, the campaign world itself would follow suit, echo in the machinations of the gods, the Queen of Darkness, Paladine, and Gillian. The character herself notes that she behaved naively, chasing after a man who supposedly didn't love her, doing what she was doing not for the greater good or glory, but to earn the love and prove herself to Tannis. This is, of course, halfway through her character arc, and by the time she arrives in southern Ergoth, she is entirely caught up in the workings of the world, doing what she can, not for the selfish love of one man, but for the love of her friends and the good in the world. You can see this evolution in the writing, naturally, but also in the way the artists portrayed her. But before we can truly appreciate what she becomes, we have to take a trip down memory lane to where she began. Lorana is the youngest child and only daughter of the Speaker of the Sun, Solasteran Cannon. Her older brothers are Portheos and Gilthanas. Lorana was taught to be a symbol of her people and act gracious in polite society though she was a product of being pampered and spoiled. She learned ceremonial swordplay and to telepathically communicate with griffins. When her father took on Tannis Half-Elven as a ward, Lorana and Tannis would fall into a romantic, though childish, relationship, promising to marry when they reached maturity. She was a skilled diplomat and even used her good looks and charm as a weapon to get her way. A week after confiding her love for Tannis to her brother Gilthanus, Tannis left Quelinost. Lorana was heartbroken. So when Tannis returned unexpectedly with an entourage heralding the changing world to come, Lorana was devastated by his rebuke of her affections and his confessions of loving Kitiara Uthmatar. This is also the beginning of the love triangle that would become a point of contention through the War of the Lance and after, leading to Lorana's capture. Lorana was determined to win the affection of Tannis, however, and even chased after him when the companions left. This is the defining moment for her character. It broke her out of the protected womb and allowed her to see the state of the world and get exposure to different perspectives and people that her insulated life sheltered her from. Exposure to different worldviews and personalities is essential for personal growth, and we're afforded a front row seat to Lorana's. When she was discovered following them, and Tannis scolded her for putting everyone in danger, she grew even more determined to prove herself. They liberated the prisoners of Pax Tharkaz, and after delivering them to Thorvarden, traveled to Tarsus. Tannis began to fall back in love with Lorana, as she was spending a lot of time with Elistan and helping the other former prisoners. When the Red Dragon army attacked Tarsus, Lorana believed Tannis was killed in a collapsed inn after throwing her to safety. She was devastated. Kitiara searched for Lorana after hearing rumors of the two being together in the murder of the dragon high lord Verminard. Finally, the tangled web of sexual tension, jealousy, and lost love has entrapped all of its players. 
Lorana earned the respect of Kitiara as she fought her in Tarsus, and the Ice Folk for her plan to sack Icewall Castle, where she killed Fielthaz at great loss. En route to Icereach, she shared the echo of Lorak's nightmare, and Lorana saw Tannis and Kitiara together, and her companion Sturm die. She began to believe Tannis was, in fact, alive. They sailed for Sancrist with a dragon orb and pieces of a dragon lance, and were attacked by the High Lord's white dragon, crashing on the shores of southern Ergoth. There she was reunited with her family in exile, but chose to deliver the orb to the Whitestone Council against her father's wishes. She split with Derek and Sturm, and was led by Silvara to Huma's tomb. There they forged the dragon lances with Theros and delivered them to the Whitestone Council. She was asked to speak on behalf of Sturm, which led him to earning his knighthood, and she was sent to the High Clarice Tower to teach the knights how to use the lance. She won the respect of all as a warrior, and Sturm sacrificed himself to allow her to activate the dragon orb, winning the battle, but again facing off with Kitiara. She is the only non-wizard to have the strength to control an orb, this is a long way from where we first met her. Though she still wanted Tannis more than ever, she even violates the law by breaking out a prisoner in exchange for Tannis in a trap set by Kitiara, where she was ultimately captured by Lord Soth. Lorona was presented as a gift to Dekesis, and Tannis went after her, using Kitiara to get her back. This backfired as Lorana no longer trusted Tannis. This is also the most unbelievable moment in the books for me. Lorana has longed for Tannis and sacrificed everything for him with the trade of Bacchus. Yet now that he is the one saving her, she no longer trusts him? But again, not for long. Because as they're escaping the temple, her affections magically return after he refuses Kitiara's offer. Now, I may be alone in this, but it was very unlike the character we have known to date. The year after the War of the Lands, Tannis and Lorana marry, and 15 years later, they would have a son, Gilthas. They worked together as diplomats, trying to unify the people of Kryn to no avail. The Quilinesti would capture Gilthas, and Tannis would be called to investigate the Knights of Tachesis. This would lead to his discovery of Sturm's son, who he would sacrifice his life for to honor his old friend, and Lorana would be called to Quilinesti by her son as his advisor. Lorana would remain in Quelinos with her son, secretly sending elves out of the city before the dragon overlord Beryl attacked it. She would face off against the dragon, and even kill it, before she died herself. From spoiled princess to golden general, and finally as queen mother, Lorana led a life that was both inspirational and terrifying. She always stepped up to the situation presented to her allowing her focus and love of her friends and family to guide her choices to the end. There is no other character that turned as many heads, perceptions, and hearts as Lorelantha Lassa Cannon, and was admired and respected by her enemies as much as her allies. And in reflection, perhaps I like her more for the moment of confusion and questioning Tannis in the Dark Queen's Temple. It added a bit of the frailty to her character that seemed to be lost since childhood. For any character to be believable, they need faults as much as virtues, and for Lorana, both were love, just as it can be in real life, and that makes her real to me. But that is all the time I have to talk about Lorana. What are your favorite scenes of Lorana's? Do you have a favorite painting or illustration of her? Do you believe she was a spoiled little girl like the authors and artists? And finally, if you had to spend time with Kitiara, Tannis, or Lorana, which would you choose and why? Leave a comment below. I'm able to create these weekly videos because of your attention and support. If you're not already a patron or member of this YouTube channel, I'd like to invite you to consider becoming one. If you'd like to pick up any edition of Dragonlance Gaming Materials, feel free to use my affiliate link in the description. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance Saga, and I hope you'll join me in the celebration. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, I can't hang around protecting you. Neither can Gilthanus. You have behaved like a spoiled brat. I told you once before, you'd better grow up. Now, if you don't, you're going to die, 
and probably get the rest of us killed right along with you. 